the washing line. It's an absolutely devastating method. And what we're going to do today is cover it in detail. So without further ado, let's get into it. The washing line then. During lockdown, I did quite a comprehensive video on how to tie some flies for the washing line and the theory side of it. But of course, I was in my dining room and it wasn't particularly helpful. So I've come to Albury Estates today to discuss the practicalities of the washing line. Now, Albury Estates is a catch and kill fishery and it's single fly only. I've had special dispensation from the manager to fish a team of flies today and release trout. I don't eat trout myself, so I don't see the point of killing something I can't use. So let's talk the washing line. Well, the washing line, what's it all about? Um, basically, I've set up a nine foot six rod with a floating line. Now you can fish the washing line on any line you see fit. I'm just using a floater because I thought it would be easier to explain what I'm doing. So basically, I've set up a 15 foot leader. I've stuck this fly on the point. I've got one of these in the middle and I've got this fly on the top dropper. Now. You might think there's a lot of colour on that cast, but I did start with this fly. But what I was finding was I was casting out my washing line setup. I was retrieving very slowly and I would get the odd pluck, but nothing. So I speeded up my retrieve and when I stopped, that's when the takes would come. And every fish so far has taken the booby. So I immediately removed the top dropper and replaced it with a fab, thinking that the bit of colour would help me increase my catch rate. As it happens, the fish are continually coming to the booby and I've now put this weighted fly in the middle and I've taken a couple of fish on that. So there's lots of permutations for setting up the washing line. I'm going to put a diagram on screen now so that you can see a couple of different options. I'm not here to give you all the answers. I'm here to try and make you think about what your flies are doing on the water. Now, with that weighted fly in the middle, what I'm getting is this shape. Booby on the point, weighted fly down below here, and the fab up top. And if I wait long enough, that weighted fly will drag my cast under, even with a floater. Now, I'd be much more efficient to change to an intermediate line and pick up my retrieve. Maybe add a roly-poly, and that would definitely get me more fish. I'm convinced of that, but I'm not going to because I'm quite keen to get this video done all on a floater. I know a lot of guys, especially the small still water anglers, all they have is a floater. And I just want to show you that it still works with just that line. Guys, if you're enjoying the videos, please don't forget to give them a like, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you'll be informed of any future videos that I release on YouTube. Uh, we've talked about the washing line today. It's not always the answer, but it's a very good way of covering quite a bit of water with just one cast. So you imagine your point flies on the point and you've got your nymphs or buzzers, whatever you choose to put below it. You know, some people like to fish uh, a blob on the top dropper, a couple of nymphs, a booby. The, you know, it's, it's really up to you how you want to set it up and fish it. What I want you to do is think about what effect is being caused 
while you're fishing. So for example, I've got my heavy fly in the middle and it's causing a seesaw effect with my booby on the point and the booby's taking most of the fish with the weighted fly taking the occasional fish. Now, if the fish were super high in the water, it may well be that fishing a fab on the top dropper, a fab on the point, and two very small light hair's ear patterns in the middle would keep your flies in that taking zone for much longer. That's what you've got to think about. Another thing to bear in mind then is what is the retrieve doing to your flies in the water? So obviously when you're retrieving very slowly, the flies are slowly descending through the water column and uh, the fish will come along and if they like the looks of it, you might get a take. What I found today is that they want a lot more movement in the flies. So I've increased my retrieve to a quick figure of eight and then when I stop, that's when the takes are coming. Just a word of caution, when you're casting a team of flies, you've got to ensure that you get good turnover. And uh, if you're not achieving good turnover, it's not a showstopper by any stretch, but just make sure after you've cast, you get a couple of long strips and that'll straighten out your leader. And as the flies are sinking through the water column, that's when you'll often get a take or very often when you've straightened your leader like that, the disturbance on the surface will bring a hungry trout along to investigate. And again, you can often get a take at that point. Now, the choice of flies for the washing line are obviously countless. You know, as long as you've got a buoyant fly, whether it be one or two, uh, and a couple of flies in the middle, or if you want to fish a three fly cast, you're fishing the washing line. If you fish it effectively, you're going to really increase your chances of catching fish. Of course, the problem with making these videos is you come out with an idea in your head and uh, today I wanted to come and fish the washing line and thankfully the fish have joined in. But very often I come and make a video with an idea in my head and forget that the fish get a vote. <laughs> so, when should you deploy the washing line? When you start off your session, especially on a small still water like this, you want to get way back. You don't want to walk straight up to the edge and you want to be fishing the margins. In the margins is where the fish will be patrolling and looking for their first meal of the day. So very often if you put your washing line out across them margins where it goes from shallow to deep, you'll get plenty of interest. As the day wears on and the fishery gets a bit busier, you'll notice that more and more anglers will step straight up to the edge of the bank and what they're going to do is push the fish further and further out. Now as the fish get further and further out, you've obviously got to cast further to follow them. So that's what you do. And then once you're using your washing line on a still water, you're increasing your chances by changing the density of the line to take the flies to the depth you want them at. I've stuck with a floating line today, but I think it's probably an intermediate day to be honest, because the fish want it moved and they are taking it quite near to the bank. So what does that mean? It means that because I've mixed my retrieve up and slowed it down in certain parts, by the time it's getting near the bank, my flies are fishing about three or four feet down. And uh, that's where I think the fish are sitting. When you're learning to cast, generally, you're only casting one fly. And uh, it's fairly easy. Now, it's slightly different when you've got a team of flies on. And what you've got to remember is to give it time at the back of the cast to straighten out your leader. And then as you go forward, again, watch for your turnover. And as I mentioned before, if you're not getting that turnover, a couple of quick strips will put you in contact with your flies and you'll be fishing in touch. Well, sadly, my time here at Albury is almost at an end. What do I want you to take away from this video? The washing line, super effective, remember, the different kinds of flies you use will cause a different effect. It'll make a difference to where the flies sit in the water, 
and it'll make a difference to what the trout see. So always be alive to that fact. Think about what your flies are doing under the water and you'll catch more fish. Thanks very much for watching the video and I'll see you all next time.